Hey there, uh, we're going to be talking about absorption today. Um, absorption is when water-soluble materials that are, are available from um, digestion enter the bloodstream, um, usually from the small intestine, and then are eventually transported to the liver. Um, these items, once they've reached the liver, they are kind of regulated so toxins are removed, excess glucose is removed, and then the nutrients are ready to go and travel around to the different tissues of the body. Um, so mm -hmm. absorption again is actually getting the food that's been digested out of the digestive system to the other tissues. Um, before we jump in, I want you to pause the video and just read the assessment statements listed here, so 6.1.1 .1 and 6.1.4 to 6.1.6, .6, and take a minute just to think about what you already know about this topic and what questions you might have. Alright, so the organ that we're going to be mostly focused on with absorption is actually the small intestine. This is the area where most absorption occurs. Uh, there's a little bit that will still happen in the large intestine, but um, pretty pretty small amount. Um, so to begin, we're going to be looking at this kind of first section of the small intestine. It's called the duodenum. And this is where digestion occurs. So it started in the mouth with chewing and with amylase. It's gone to the stomach, been digested further. And now the duodenum is kind of the last area of digestion. This is an area where um, lipase is going to come into play um, to break down excess fats and things like that. Um, the jejunum is where nutrient absorption will begin, um, but the the majority of the nutrient absorption will happen in the ileum. So the process here is that the chyme, which remember chyme is food that's kind of gone through the digestion process, it's going to move through the small intestine using... Um, a motion that's very similar to that which we talked about in the esophagus. So that was peristalsis. And what's happening here is there are muscle contractions. Oops. There are muscle contractions um, on either side of the um, small intestine that will happen be behind the bolus or the chyme, pushing it further and further through the small intestine. Um, it will then, as it moves, um, be in contact with the walls of the small intestine, and we'll see why that's important in just a moment. Okay, so the small intestine is the place of absorption because it has all of these different things that make it very, very efficient at its job. Um, the first thing that we've already talked about is that it is muscular, allowing for those muscle contractions to push the chyme through the length of the small intestine. Um, it also has, I'm sorry, so that causes continuous movement of the small intestine, which allows for mixing with enzymes and also, like I said, contact with the ileum walls. Um, it has adequate absorption time. So the small intestine is very, very large. In humans, it's six meters long. Um, and just an interesting side note, in cows, it's actually 40 meters long. Um, so it does have a lot of time um, spent in the small intestine to allow for adequate absorption. In addition to this, it has an enormous surface area. So here, um, we see this inner layer uh, is covered in what are called villi. And we're going to look at villi a little more um, specifically in a moment, but they allow for a gigantic surface area within the small intestine. So let's take a closer look at this um, inner surface area. So this first diagram here is just a cross section of the small intestine, and you can see that muscle layer. Um, you can see that it is actually folded on the inside. Um, so that increases the surface area. And then what we're looking at here are the villi. Um, so the villi are interesting. They've got a lot going on. What they are are little finger-like structures that stick out into uh, the interior of the small intestine. Um, 
They have a capillary network, which is huge. Remember that for efficient absorption, um, there needs to be a pretty short distance for items to, to flow. And so this allows a very short distance from the inside of the small intestine to the actual blood supply. Um, so this capillary is going to extend up and out of each individual um, villi. Or villus. Um, in addition, there's this thing called a lacteal. The lacteal is um, specifically used for absorbing fats um, and then depositing them throughout the body. Um, so the lacteal is an important structure as well. Um, there's also smooth muscle at the base of each of these villus, um, and this allows for movement of the villus. So as, as the uh, muscular movement of the small intestine is incurring these villus are moving as well, um, moving around the chyme, getting uh, contact with the chyme, and allowing for efficient absorption. In addition to the villus, each villus is surrounded by what we call microvilli. And microvilli are even smaller finger-like structures that again increase the surface area even more. Um, together these things amazingly increased surface area about um, 300 times what it would normally be. So just to go through that math with you, just the folding of the small intestine increases the surface area about three times of what it would be if it were just a smooth tube. Then you add the villi and this increases another, so this was three, this increases another times 10 and then the microvilli increases an additional times 10. So we've got about 300 times the surface area of what we would if this were just a smooth tube. And so this allows over that 6 meters for very efficient um, absorption to occur. Okay, so along these 6 meters, there's a few different types of absorption that are going to be happening. Ideally, everything would be able to be done through simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion because, remember, these don't require any energy. However, um, in order to stock up on different materials or move very large materials, there is some active transport that needs to happen. Remember that active transport is moving items from low concentration to higher concentration, so against the normal gradient. Um, and so this is going to be used for like glucose and amino acids, things that are probably pretty well supplied in the bloodstream, but but don't need to be excreted. Um, they need to be saved for later. Um, in addition to this, uh, there's a process called pinocytosis, which is basically the exact same thing as exocytosis, um, but it's specifically discussing movement of usually large proteins from the small intestine into the bloodstream. And so pinocytosis is a process to move larger items out of the um, small intestine. So all of these four things and along with that huge surface area make us very efficient at absorption and allow us to store needed items and to um, monitor the toxins and sugars and whatnot that enter our bloodstream. Um, we will talk more about the liver in coming days and um, please write down any questions that you have to ask in class. Thanks.